98% of those. So I think that's where the uh, the difference lies. You can see, and whereas Luke's uh, percentage for the match, 60%, uh, obviously not as high as Minar's, 73% for the match. Um, and also, you see the fastest serve, 204k for Minar, and the average speed consistently had a bit bigger serve, a bit more on his shots, um, and that was the main difference really. Um, but yeah, look, Saville, he can hold his habit higher because he's uh, he's had a good match here. And Manara, I wouldn't be surprised if he could uh, qualify here at the uh, Australian Open 2012. Also uh, good at the net, so I thought Manara uh, on most occasions. That's right, on 59% of the times he came in, 29 occasions as well. And they both came in a lot, which was good tennis, a lot of all-round, all-court tennis. Um, Saville coming in 27 times as well. On about 50% of those, but uh, he really uh, did some great volleys as well. But Minar, too strong, and uh, he played some great tennis. So on show court three, it was the first round of the men's qualifying. Took a couple of uh, sessions to play it, a game that was interrupted from last night. But in the end, it was I for Minar from the Czech Republic with a dominant win, 7-6, 6-1. Welcome back to Melbourne Park on this uh, day two of uh, qualifying for the 2012 Australian Open. And Ivo Minar of the Czech Republic 7661 over Australia's uh, Luke Seville, completing our second match here on our show court. Of course, earlier today it was uh, Denis Molchanov of the Ukraine over a very impressive young 17 year old Andrew Harris who did play some good tennis in that match. And coming up next, it's going to be Matt Reed, who's uh, come off a pretty good 2011. Taking on Gianluca Nasso of Italy. Of course, that to be followed by Laura Robson and Melanie Udan of the USA. We're looking forward to that this afternoon. The good uh, news is the, uh, the showers seem to be going away for the remainder of the day, so we should have good, clear sunshine. Of course, uh, a tough one for Luke Seville. David got his match postponed at last night at 3 all, and you lose a bit of that uh, momentum. Uh, I mean, I just said it in the crowd watching a little bit of that game. He certainly had uh, Luke on the back foot for the majority, certainly of that second set, pairing away in the blink of an eye, really, six games to one. He did, yeah, impressive serving from Manar, as we mentioned throughout the broadcast. And yeah, he was just a little bit too strong for Luke, unfortunately. Well, what's happening on the outside courts at the moment? And uh, as we can see, a couple of ticks there. Uh, James Setlinky, the Australian. Defeated that on uh, court six in the uh, third set, six games to two. And uh, the other match, which was uh, postponed from last night, Daniel Brands of uh, Germany taking on Denai Udemchok. And uh, that one is going to a third and deciding set. Udemchok with a break there, 2 1, leading 30 15 in the uh, third set. We'll keep a very close eye on that. Of course, you can follow all the matches in progress on AustralianOpen.com while watching our live stream. As the men continue, 128 down to 16, the women from 96 down to 12. And we'll see the girls out on court in the next match uh, following this one between Australia's Matt Reid, who has uh, made his way out onto court, and uh, Gianluca Nasso of Italy. Nasso ranked uh, 225 in the world. 
25 years of age. He's had a few uh, peaks and troughs as far as his uh, ranking is concerned. Um, did make the finals of a uh, Futures event last year. But uh, Matt Reed is certainly one we're very keen to uh, keep a close eye on. The 21-year-old has gone from 455 in the world at the start of 2011 down to 272. He did play the British... Uh, the British, the Brisbane qualifiers, uh, the one match a couple of weeks ago. It uh, played a lot on the Futures Tour last year. In fact, won four events. Mm. Nassau. All right, so same as in your other matches. In the, actually, this is the first match for you guys, right? Yeah. Six balls, seven and be changes. All our lines are covered. Any questions about time or anything? Nope. Nassau hit the tails, please. Heads is clear. And it's tails. Receive. Okay. Okay, that's the uh, the coin toss. Just going back to Matt Reedy because he won three, I should say, three Futures events uh, last year. One in Serbia on the clay, he won in Romania, and also on in Bendigo on the Australian Pro Tour. Made four other finals, six semi-finals and five quarter-finals. So a very impressive year, and he'd love to turn a few more of the quarter-finals and semi-finals into finals and eventually uh, victories, and he will uh, continue to uh, head up the rankings. Tillman's in with me to uh, commentate this match. Brad, good to see you again. Likewise, uh, good to see it uh, shining for them. Well, it's just got a little bit uh, darker for the moment, but uh, generally uh, the weather's been pretty good for us on day two. There's no question he's, uh, Matt's a pretty handy player. Um, the Italian, as you would expect, has played most of his tennis uh, on the clay in Europe. Uh, very consistent player, certainly has the uh, chops to be here. It'll be interesting to see how his game translates, though, to the hard court. So send your tweets in uh, throughout the afternoon at, uh, of course, hashtag OzOpen. Plenty of matches still to get through on uh, day two of qualifying here at uh, Melbourne Park. Stack of tennis uh, around the country, uh, building up to the first uh, Grand Slam of the year in uh, Hobart, Sydney. Uh, the Amy Classic, of course, not too far away to uh, Magnificent Kuyong, Heineken Open. Also the World Tennis Challenge. Uh, I was watching a bit of that last night, Mark. Uh, but I tell you, if you're buying a ticket to that, you'd walk away pretty pleased. You know, you'll see, you'll see some of those players also as part of the Australian Open series. They come down in the second week and have a bit of a hit. If, you, if you've got that grounds pass and you've got a chance to jump on one of the show courts to see some of the legends of tennis play, it is, they make it very entertaining for you. There's no question about that. And there's still uh, some serious competitive juices flowing through their body as well. Yeah, that doesn't go away just because you get older. Well, you watch a player like John McEnroe last night and three minutes. I mean, he's still in fantastic shape for a guy at 51 years of age. Still uh, serves that you know, great left-hander serve and solid ground strokes. He was always one of the great volleyers, McEnroe, and he just looks like he could still get out there and compete. That's right. He certainly can. And, you know, Pat Cash plays out there as well. Um, I guess if you had to say someone who may have uh, enjoyed the uh, French pastries a bit more <laughs> yes. might be Henri Leconte, but... There is no more entertaining player than, than him on the court. He certainly makes it an enjoyable uh, spectacle. Yeah, no, it, uh, it'll continue tonight, of course, over there at Memorial Drive in uh, Adelaide. Both courts uh, operating uh, together in a yeah, terrific tournament. Matt Reed, at an interesting stage, isn't he? I mean, he obviously he's had a, a big jump uh, this year and been pretty consistent on the futures too as uh, being at the pointy end of just about every tournament he's played and that's resulted in three wins, uh, four finals and uh, we wait to see whether he can uh, take the next step. He's had a really interesting developmental career. He spent some time in the US in Boletari's Academy. Uh, you know, his time in Europe has been very beneficial and, and of course his most recent result, um, well actually second recent result over in Bendigo and then through the, um, the Australian Showdown uh, acquitted himself quite well uh, with all those matches. We've certainly uh, been following his uh, progress keenly over the last uh, few tennis seasons. And now at a stage where uh, he'll be really trying to crack that top 200 in 2012. He certainly has a complete game for it. I think it really just boils down to him deciding it's time to really step up to the next level. Uh, 
you'll see a, a very crisp forehand, uh, very uh, good and consistent first serve, and uh, happily chases balls all over the court. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if he brings all those skills to bear in this match today. Of course, you're here uh, in the lead up and then the two weeks of the open. You've been roaming around uh, today. There's some good crowds, you know, they're, they're enjoying it. It's a uh, free entry, enjoying a bit of sunshine, and it uh, really is a big event with uh, a lot of the uh, big name players also using a lot of these outside courts to uh, get in some practice sessions. We saw Nikolai Davidenko out there earlier today, Andrew Ivanovic. So, terrific value just to come in and not only watch the qualifying, but get up close and watch some of the star tennis players uh, prepare for the, the first Grand Slam. The value for money, particularly for in that first week, the grounds pass is just can't be understated. The access you get to players, the see them on the practice court. Um, I had a chance to watch Nicholas Mahout play uh, or practice rather yesterday, and and um, some of the players take it very very seriously. Nicholas was having a great old time out there, having a uh, flipping some balls to some of the, uh, the people watching him. Uh, yeah, and that's that's not an uncommon experience that you'd have here down at Melbourne Park, certainly during the qualifying week and even during the practice sessions that you can get very up close and personal with the players. Yeah, you certainly can. And uh, Nicholas Mahut, of course, uh, well, he'll go down in history for that oh, marathon at Wimbledon and never be forgotten. Mm. Along with John Isner. I always laugh and tell people that story because I was up in the commentary box sitting high above uh, centre court at Wimbledon and of course that first week you're, you're concentrating on the matches there, you've got a stack of matches going on and um, we didn't actually notice the game unfolding until the fifth set and someone said to me, have you seen this game out on court 18? It's 24-23 in the fifth. And of course it went on to what, 71-69 I think, something like oh, that. Yeah, it was a marathon. It was just the beginning. <laughs> So, uh, now saw the Italian to serve first. The third of our matches here on our broadcast court. He starts with an ace down the middle. That's the way to get it started. 196 kilometres. that ball was long. A big first serve from the Italian going down the tee. That one just a little bit less. The first one at 196, that at 188. Italian uh, dictating the opening game. Very a quick efficient. hold, holding to love. Couple of good first serves down the tee and some good grand strokes to start. So, at the blocks quickly. Great to have you with us here on AustralianOpen.com, uh, whatever time zone you're in. see the girls uh, for the first time coming up in the next match between Freddy uh, Udan of the USA and Great Britain's Laura Robson. One to look forward to. Quality ball striking there on that point.
Sergi and Luca hits with an incredible amount of topspin, as you would expect. Someone who's been playing most of their tennis on clay. Got a great little jump off the uh, hard court there on that one. Matt couldn't handle it. Oh! But that's the way to answer with the tough first serve. his first ace of the day. And Matt Reed gets a quick hold of his own. And we're a game of peace. Uh, early stages of the first set. Australia's Matthew Reed there on your screen, taking on Italy's Gianluca Nus. Gianluca Naso. Should have said that right. My brother in law is called uh, Gianluca. Owns a great uh, Italian cafe in uh, beautiful Castle Main in country Victoria. If you're oh, okay. heading up that way, called Origini. hit and tried to get the ball fairly deep into the court just couldn't drop it back down It's a good aggressive off forehand though from Matt. Well, you really get the sense that both these players are very evenly matched. Mm. Trading forehands and backhands with a high degree of competence. Really gonna, if you're one of these guys, you're really going to have to go out and win. You can't wait for your opponent to lose. So a break point opportunity here for uh, Matt Reed. This game only uh, seven minutes old, already into the third game. And the Australian would love to uh, strike an early break here. So comes up with his uh, biggest serve, just eclipsing his 196 in his opening service game. That at 197 Ks.
windows. Long and Reed really uh, working at Hazel over there on the backhand side. So he gets a second breakpoint opportunity. Second serve. Yeah, you don't even have to look at it because uh, it's gone straight into the net for a double fault. We lead to and Matt Ree gets a nice early break here in qualifying. We'll be back with plenty more right here on AustralianOpen.com. MLC Tennis Hot Shots. Kids are ready for tennis as soon as they can swing a racket. With modified balls, courts and rackets to make things easy, they'll serve, rally and score right away. Visit tennis.com.au today. As we welcome you back to Melbourne Park, that is what is happening around the grounds at the moment. You can see Great Britain's uh, James Ward there on court four. After a couple of tiebreakers, starting to skip away in the third set, leading it three games to love. And the other one to keep an eye on there, court 14, Daniel Brands and uh, Dead Eye Udemchok also into a uh, third set. All the scores at AustralianOpen.com. Matt Reed serving here with an early break. Took that ball nice and early and drove it deep into the court. 32. And at this sense of the match, both players are content to stay on the baseline and just trade forehands and backhands, just asking the question, do you have another shot in your bag to get back? Mm. No one's looking at this stage to come into the net, even when they push their opponent out wide. And Reed really sort of focusing on that backhand side. That's right. Peppering it here. Ah! And again, the serve going to the backhand. Second one in this game. Mm. Just right, but just couldn't get the ball up over the net. So the Italian gets a, a breakpoint opportunity of his own here. Yes. He comes up with a ripper. Down the tee. 199, the quickest serve so far in this match. Thanks 
exactly what you need when you're uh, facing a break point. Ah! And that was just wide. Again, going back to the backhand side. So he goes with the second serve. Too early there, but there's now so another break point opportunity. Oh. I think that one bounced off the umpire. Yeah, a little bit of contact for a man in red. So, uh, double fault, he's third, and uh, Nasa has been able to break back here, two games all. Matt Reid not able to uh, capitalise on his break of serve in the uh, previous game. So we're back all square. Our third match uh, today, following uh, wins to uh, Denis Molchanov of the Ukraine, and uh, Minara of the Czech Republic uh, defeating Australia's uh, Luke Seville. Looks like a big forehand again. Mark, I only just discovered in the last few days with uh, Gian Luca here being from Italy. My wife was born in a town called Biella in northern Italy mm -hmm. and they actually play an ITF event there every year at the tennis courts opposite where we've been staying the two team two times previous. So I'm going to have to time my run to Biella a little bit better in the future and try and take in uh, the tennis there. Indeed, you'll be in your wife's good graces then. <laughs> Tweet hashtag Oz Open. Uh, yeah, plenty of open court. Nicely done there by Reed. ball. Another That's long exchange, really just about forced there. So the Italian heads to the chair, leading it three games to two. You're watching live qualifying here from Melbourne Park. That's a fine pass 
decent shot from Luke Saville there, finding his stride. Great control. Great work from the golf scar. Working in the back of the courts. Don't forget the National Tennis League uh, coming soon in the second week of the Australian Open. Hashtag Oz Open is our Twitter address. Keep up the good work, guys. I'm waiting to watch uh, the next match. Uh, Laura Robson taking on Melanie Udan in a, a tough draw. Or the main draw of the Australian Open. Oh. Chris Goldsmith uh, following the fortunes of uh, James Ward. We updated his score a little bit before. Uh, four love up in that third set. And if he uh, does prevail there, he'll take on Ivo Minar, who got up over uh, Luke Seville on this court a little bit earlier on. Has been, of course, a, a top 100 player. Quickly, please, 62 in the world. Ready for play. through here I'm uh, this is from Chad I'm following all the exciting young Aussie scores while they're chilling at the Kuramundi Lakes Chad more information please how's the weather up there oh, that's a beautiful drop shot difficult to execute from that part of the court but he kept his wrist nice and firm and got enough spin on the ball just to drop it right over the net Kuramundi Lakes, I'm not totally familiar where it is. If you could let us know, Chad, or someone can tweet in. Hashtag Oz open. Yeah, Reed. So Reed gets a quick hold to love. And we're still all square in this opening set. Three games apiece. on that Luke Savile from the last match. Uh, Savile covers an incredible amount of court. He certainly does. He's a good athlete, good prospect. Beaten by a more experienced uh, campaigner a little bit earlier. And Jed drop in. With a wry smile on his fate, Matt has knowing that he got away with one right there. And uh, Lexa, it's great to have you on board from Bogota. I knew there'd be someone out there from Bogota. Where's everyone tweeting in from today and who are you supporting? So keep your tweets coming through. Let us know where you are. Hashtag Oz open. And have you spent any time in South America? No, I haven't been there at all. Wouldn't mind going to the uh, the Bogota Open. Oh, well, two. Well, I actually remembered having a chat to a couple of the Australian players who have been over there, and they're treated like royalty, I believe, mm. in Bogota. fascinating part. I mean, a lot of these guys in qualifying play all over the globe. And so one sails out. Yeah, it really does redefine the word journeyman, doesn't it? Yeah, in far-reaching places. I mean, Bogota's a capital city, but it'd be fascinating to actually go and watch some of these challenger events in those sort of places to see how it's all set up and what it's like. Oh, no. 
nicely done. So Reed now gets a break point opportunity. Yep. by the Italian Re kept going to that backhand side and he yes. came up with a beautiful shot right at the shoelaces of Matt Reed. really had to make him work as he approached the net well played Offering no apologies for the miss hit on the return there. So another opportunity for a break point. Just trickled across. He does apologize for that one. Oh, it's been the word of the day, trickle. It was trickling rain a little bit earlier and a nice little trickle just over there. A little lucky break for Matt Reed. But for the second time in this opening set, he gets a break. We'll come back on the other side and see if we can capitalize on AustralianOpen.com. sure you get your tickets tickettech.com.au Matt Reed here with a chance to really press ahead in this opening set he'll come out and serve at 4-3 and a little bit of news uh, coming in from the Amy oh. Classic uh, down at Kuyong in Australia's uh, Bernard Tomic with a couple of match points uh, playing the Frenchman uh, Gail Monfils this afternoon and of course he defeated Thomas uh, Burdick yesterday he's in terrific form Lot to look forward to at Melbourne Park over the next fortnight. One would think for young Bernard Tomic. Fifteen. Might see if we can also get an update of the uh, quarter-final down at Hobart too. Uh, Yamila Gaidasova playing down there. We'll see if we can grab that update for you shortly. Quality of ball striking out there very high. Matt Reed's really going to have to do something special here to consolidate this break. And just like that on cue, tough serve out wide. Two hundred 
104 kilometers an hour. He's really lifting at the moment, really driving out of those those shoes to get as much as he can on that first serve. Well, it's at this eighth game that he needs to make a statement here, and he's done it in emphatic style. That's his quickest at 213 kilometers an hour. And now the Australian leading it to five games to three. Great to have you with us. Day two of qualifying. And if you're uh, joining us from Italy, a bonjour to you. I'm sure you're following uh, Gian, Gianluca Nasso, who uh, needs to uh, find his best form at the end of this uh, first set. almost over Matt Reed's head as it hit the, the service court. Seems to have gone to another gear here, hasn't he? Yeah, certainly putting his foot down the last couple of games. Some good power. Luca needs to lift, get himself back into some rhythm here with the serve. Referee's uh, certainly picking up at uh, court level. Today, Melbourne of 21 degrees. We were running around earlier today, but at the moment looks to be okay. that fine. Reed was never going to get back into the court there. Reed now with a set point. The Australian who's uh, come into this qualifying draw in good form on the back of a good 2011, looking to, to build on that. there by Nassau.
Oh, kid took that one right <laughs> in the head. You've got to be switched on down there. Occupational hazard. And uh, another set point here for Matt Reed. Yeah, we saw, uh, of course, David Bidmead from our team uh, trying to roll the balls a little bit earlier. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh, left a bit to be desired. At the US Open, they throw them baseball style. <laughs> So certainly isn't going to go away, hand it to Matt. He's going to have to earn it, isn't he? Ah! So now the Italian with a game point. This uh, fluctuating uh, ninth game. That's a cracking forehand. Fantastic tennis right there. Started with the tough return, got it down nice and flat, and almost after that he had complete control of the point. Third time, the Australian has got a set point. Back to juice. We can tell you that uh, Kuyong at the Army Classic, uh, Bernard Tomic has defeated the Frenchman uh, Gail Monfils in three sets. Third set going to a tiebreaker, it sounded like. So, uh, some good match practice for Bernie. Advantage in Arsenal. So with another uh, game point, so a long uh, ninth game here. Yeah, Emphatically. Comes up with a great serve. And uh, he's going to make Matty Reid on the other side of this break come out and serve for the opening set. You're watching day two of qualifying for Australian Open 2012. The man uh, Bernard Tomic and uh, saluting at uh, Kuyong uh, today at the Amy Classic. We'll be seeing uh, plenty of Bernard Tomic come uh, next week here at uh, Melbourne Park, bathed in sunshine at the moment. And it's uh, a pretty healthy scoreline if Matt Reek can uh, come out and serve 
accordingly in this 10th game and take out the opening set. We have seen uh, a few breaks to serve already. But uh, Reid has been able to get that serve up to uh, over the 200 kilometre mark. I need a couple here. Continues to really go after that backhand, doesn't he? Asking the question. Yeah, it's been a very clear intention uh, right from the opening game. into the court, yeah. took it on the rise. Gave Matt no time to react to that flat return. So a couple of break points here for the Italian to square it all up. Just a little slow there on that second serve. Never got in the right position to hit that ball. Expect Matt to go after this first serve. wasn't the key factor, it was just right down the tee. Yeah, just what he needed. As he works his way back into this 10th game. Second break point opportunity coming up here. This match uh, nearly 45 minutes old. Opening set. doesn't like uh, the call it's at the other end of the court for where we're sitting high above here he wants to call it out it's not his decision is it extremely close 
Back to juice. Need to love one more of those. Two more, in fact. Well played. And now another set point. Australia's Matt Reed. This is the time right now he needs that big one down the tee. That's right. He went there with good Three, success. Exactly right. 210 kilometres an hour. And Australia's Matt Reed takes the opening set. Six games to four. The first round of qualifying. Very nice result. In a uh, topsy turvy opening set. A few breaks to serve. But Reed able to get a couple of those key breaks and really capitalise in the 10th game. Made to earn that first set mark, but he's uh, got there. That's right. We'll take a break. We'll uh, come back with more of Mark's thoughts. We'll uh, check in with all the other scores as well. You're watching qualifying action right here on AustralianOpen.com. Make sure you get your tickets, tickettech.com.au. Fantastic value come the first week of the Australian Open. The grand pass is just $29. The family pass at $75. Of course, you can get into a Garden Square, Grand Slam Oval, uh, AO Dining. You can watch the practice courts. $44.90 if you want to head to a single session at High Sense Arena over the next uh, fortnight, uh, day and night for an adult. And $67.90 to get onto Rod Laver Arena. And uh, they are cheaper if you pre purchased via Ticket Tech, so make sure you log on. Tickettech.com.au. Second set underway. Now, so it's really going to have to lift not just his first serve percentage, but his location within the service box to really make Matt move around a little bit, give himself more court to work with. that one but didn't just didn't get enough on the return leaving the open court now so made him pay on the line. Double fault, not that there's ever a good time for one of those. Oh. 
Someone feed that bird, please. <laughs> Gee, didn't have a lot of pace on that suit at a 131, but... Great, uh, disappointed not to uh, keep that in play. Sensational. Well Kept himself alive in the point. He was on the back foot and has come up trance. Well done, Matt Reed. Fantastic hands. Sometimes it's the ball that's traveling that fast you actually have a better chance at because you don't get it, you can't think, you just react. I made the comment the last few days uh, the defensive work of our Australian players here, really enjoying that side. The, Billy's staying the point. Yeah, it is the hallmark of Australian tennis, at least at the pointy end. Yeah, I saw it with James Duckworth during the AO wildcard playoff and, and watching uh, you know John Millman out here yesterday, unfortunately didn't get through, but you know, just ran down everything and Matt Reed. Of course, uh, extremely fit. You have to throw Peter Luchek into that bunch as well. Yeah, absolutely. Deuce. Might have been an Italian. I don't do know a few Italian words, but not quite sure what he said then. Excellently crafted point there by Matt. He's got an early uh, break point opportunity here in the opening game of this second set. run around this serve again. Deuce. Tough thing about executing that early footwork is that sometimes the ball doesn't go where you want it to. Mm. You recompensate. Once again, the placement. Kind of mentally back into that point there, regrouped. Tough serve. Uh. 
So eventually is able to hold. Matt Reed had a little snip there of an early break, but the Italian is able to consolidate and it leads to the second set. One game to love after Reed took the opening set six games to four. Of course, plenty of you out there uh, tuning, in, tuning in via our Australian Open YouTube channel. And if it's uh, going to be on at the Australian Open, it's going to be on AOTV. A daily feature videos are showing the colour and culture of the Australian Open. You can watch uh, Novak Djokovic uh, give dancing lessons. Uh, okay, behind the scenes, I'm keen to see that. Uh, behind the scenes uh, footage of uh, AO11 and uh, some uh, great photo shoots, a highlight of feature matches uh, from each day of the AO. Daily exclusive interviews with the players and officials. And of course the Kia Open Drive, which we did enjoy last year. And it Reed starts with a nice forehand cross court. And, uh, of course, the players uh, are driven around uh, Melbourne in a, a nice key Optima. And they just respond to the questions. Don't get to look at them on the tablet computer. So plenty to look forward to. AustralianOpenTV.com. Just get the sense Nasso is talking to himself, trying to will himself back into this match. Matt is just continuing to serve very tough and giving him no looks at a decent ball. Again, stepping way into the court on that short return, flattening the ball out, hitting it for a winner. Comfortable hold. Game of peace. Up next, it's going to be Melanie Udan from the USA taking on Great Britain's Laura Robson. Stick around for that right here on AustralianOpen.com. Going to get to see the girls for the first time. Guessed early, Nasso saw that and incited out that for a winner. Going back to the Australian Open next week, there's so much to see besides the, the pro single players. There's the doubles, of course. There's the junior tennis that starts in the second week. And do not short thrift the wheelchair tennis. That is something to see if yeah, you've never good. seen it. Hey. Yeah, the, the amazing winning run of Esther Vicky. Oh. What, what's her... It's, it's over 400 matches, I think. Yeah, you know, we talk about some of the greatest tennis players ever, and certainly re most of the time that conversation revolves around able-bodied people, but she is in a class by herself. Mm. There's no question about that. I had a chance during the December showdown to talk to some of those athletes, and they are as committed and as dedicated and passionate about their sport as any other player you'd see. It's certainly worth a look in. there on the backhand of Reed.
So Nasso is able to hold serve. It's on serve in this second set. So Matt Reid taking the first 6-4. It's Nasso leading the second two games to one. We'll be back shortly right here from Melbourne Park. MLC Tennis Hot Shots, kids are ready for tennis as soon as they can swing a racket. With modified balls, courts and rackets to make things easy, they'll serve, rally and score right away. Visit tennis.com.au today. And that man on the screen is uh, Gianluca Nasso of Italy. He's got some work to do to get himself uh, back into this match. He's got the Early advantage uh, serving first at 2 1, but he's a set down. And uh, plenty of people uh, in here at Show Court 3 enjoying the tennis as they are on the other courts in operation today. In beautiful Melbourne. Well, we're slightly biased if you're listening around the world. We uh, do enjoy our sport here. We love the couple of weeks of the Australian Open, the December showdown. Which is a great month as well, seeing a lot of our juniors uh, come through. Oh. And, uh, I'll tell you what, if you're around the world, put Melbourne on the radar if you haven't been here before. You'll be spoiled for sport. Yeah. Love to you. Bit of a casual swing there by Matt Reed. Tennis players really look at the game in just one point at a time and how they regroup after things don't go well. That's that's Matt really establishing himself right getting right back in the game there. And again uh, back to thirty each. Those little victories can give you a whole lot of confidence as you as you progress through the match, knowing you can get yourself down 30 and get right back into it. Nice. So good recovery here from uh, Reed. Sasha, who I think was tweeting us yesterday. Sasha, I'm just trying to remember where you were from. Uh, but uh, he might have been yelling out, Gian, look, uh, Forza, which is Italian for come on. So, thank you, Sasha. Oh, beautiful serve down the middle at 208. Good recovery, and he's back at 2 all. The Aussie. Second serve. support for Ben Atomic. Uh, we mentioned he's winning to uh, the Amy Classic uh, this afternoon on our tweets. Hashtag Australian Oz Open, I should say. Hashtag Oz Open.
he was there too and knows it. Fifteen. Just maybe took his eye off the ball there, watching where it was going instead of seeing it off the racket. You just get the sense that Nasso is playing catch up on every point. Reed service games are quick and Nasso's games continue just to have deep, deep rallies. Nasso is able to hold. He leads it three games to two. We'll come back shortly. Very comfortable game there. So we'll uh, just await some uh, news in just a moment. But it is uh, Gian Luca Nasso of Italy leading it uh, three games to two over Australia's uh, Matt Reed. Hi, above uh, the broadcast garden, we can see him just below Rod Laver Arena. It's our very own Adrian Franklin. Thank you, BP. Yes, we're up at the broadcast media garden right now. Now, this is the area where the big name players will come to post match during the Australian Open and they'll get interviews with all of the media groups. So you can see right behind me, we've got a player already with one of the Asian production teams getting interviewed. It's beautiful up here, and BP, you're going to love this. I reckon they've had the horticulturalists up here. Now they've been working on these plants. We've got the beautiful chairs as well. White works brilliantly. So Rafael Nadal, Caroline Wozniacki, Roger Federer, they'll all come up here. Oh. They'll sit down, as, as I'm doing right now, and they'll just have an interview. And if you just pan across Klaus the cameraman, just back there, you'll see Show Court 3, and we've got the beautiful city of Melbourne. And also, guys, I've got some score updates. Now, over in Auckland, BP, your mate Philip Kohlschreiber, got up. He beat Nicolas Almagro seven games to six, six games to four. Bernard Tomic had mentioned up against Gael Monfils. He won in the third set tiebreak at Kuyong. And you guys mentioned that. that was, it was a bit of an exhibition match to be fair. So it was interesting, but he had another match that he's won. So guys, the horticulturalists, as I mentioned, they'll be working their way around this beautiful area leading up to Monday, the first day of the Australian Open. Yeah, looking forward to that. Thanks, Adrian. He's got a good job, isn't he? Just roaming around. And uh, that's a great setup. In fact, uh, we are going to be doing the uh, live screen coverage uh, here at uh, Melbourne Park. I think just below uh, Adrian, our little studio set up there from uh, Monday. Yeah. Adrian could have identified any of those plants in the uh, the pots and so forth. <laughs> And right there with the smash at the net. It's good having that. Let's just pop in there. Okay. Yeah, what's time?
Again, Matt Reed's game seemed to last a minute or two, and, and the, uh, the service games by Nassau can drag and drag and drag. It's just, he'd like to see Nassau just really pick up his first serves, really get him moving around the box a bit more, see if he can put more pressure on Matt. In the meantime, though, we're still on serve at 3 3. Yeah, this is the time if he's going to strike in this second set, Matt Reed. It right here and now. One hour and 11 minutes. This match has been going. How did he make that? He just has a commitment to get every ball, ball back. <laughs> that is the highlight of the day so far. To get it on his racket and then hit it flat and into the court is just a testament to his training and preparation. Body low, getting stopped, and getting the ball back in play with pace. NASA's got to be sitting there wondering, what do I need to do next? Well, maybe that's what you need to do is blast to serve out wide. Put it out of reach. 190 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Screwed over a little bit. There you go. Oh, Gianluca. There we sort. It goes over the baseline, so break point opportunity here for Reed. Dera camp 22 for Reed 20 for Nassau. It's a fairly line ball in that department. Yeah, it's just the timing of those unforced errors, isn't it? saying he 
hit it. Don't be shy. Hit the ball. Uh, Craig Willis, I think this is his third attempt to land today. It's uh, a couple of times we had to abort the operation. Oh. And he comes by a chopper, let me tell you. Oh. Bounded just long over the baseline. So it gives a game point opportunity here to the Italian. take this opportunity to tell you that I just got a message from a um, listener in Eugene, Oregon, working on his dissertation and listening to our broadcast. All right, Debbie, with us. Again. Deuce. Just when you think he's not going to get there, he comes up with the winner. It's just amazing chase. You'd almost think NASA's tipping where he's going. His jump is so quick to the ball. 23 to 12, the winners count. Matt Reed's way. He has come up with some absolute beauties. to see Nasso really try and get some pace on this first serve. Just trying to get the right ball. go he says so the Italian keeps his nose in front Matty Reed really pushed him in that seventh game but it is the Italian who leads it four games to three Matty Reed taking the first set six games to four let's head to Adrian Franklin he is on uh, show court three with a very special guest absolutely I've been lucky enough to speak to a couple of our Australian wild cards into next year's Australian Open Greg Jones James Duckworth and now I've got another Olivia Rogowska. Now, first of all, I just checked how to, how to pronounce your surname, and it is Rogowska. That is, that's right. Aussies like to say Rogowska, but it's correct, it is Rogowska. So. I'm so happy we cleared that up, seriously. It's bothered <laughs> me for such a long time. It's, uh, I get used to it. I've had really interesting pronounci pronunciations. It's been Rogowska, Radwanska, <laughs> so Rogowska. <laughs> Rogowska, there you go. It is Rogowska. Now, you're watching Matty out here. What, he was, did he win that one? 4-3 uh, up, I think. Yeah, um, no, 4-3 uh, I think it's still in serve. I was chatting to you. Sorry, you distracted me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tend to have that effect. That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's talk a little bit about the tennis. He's doing very well. He won the first set and yeah, he's on serve now. Do you think he can pull this one off? Yeah, he's been playing really well lately. Um, he's been training really hard with the AAS and he's got a new coach now, Brent Larkin. So um, yeah, he's, he's been playing really well and hopefully um, he'll keep his nerves um, and pull it off, pull a win off. 
And leading up to the Australian Open on Monday, what are you up to? Just hitting the court, in the gym? Yeah, training hard. Um, trained three times today. Um, training hard in the gym. So, you know, I'll taper off leading up to the Australian Open, but uh, I've still got a couple of days, you know, to cram some time on court. No worries. As Matt just serves down a bomb there, so where he's three, four down at the stage, and fifteen love. So we've got the draw coming up this week. Have you thought about that much, uh, you know, much at all, or you just completely ignore it and just see what happens? Yeah, you know, <laughs> they usually do it two days before, so um, I really do get nervous um, until the draw's done. But you know, I guess it's luck of the draw. It just um, depends who you get, and either, whoever you get is always going to be really tough. I'm going to have to play my top tennis to beat anyone. Yeah, for sure. No worries. Well, we'll keep watching this one closely, but there was one thing I did speak to Olivia during the playoffs and you said you were interested in after your tennis career, which is hopefully going to go for a very long time, but you're interested in the media side of things. So what I'm going to ask Olivia to do is throw back to the commentary box. I'm going to hand it over. Off you go. You're watching live from Melbourne Park. Now off to the commentary box. <laughs> oh, Olivia Rogowska. She's what a got, star. She has skills. Oh, I could see a future. Loved. Beyond her uh, tennis career, thank you Adrian, in the crowd there, and Randy Reid, uh, as Adrian said, serving in a bomb, it was in fact I think his quickest serve at 2.16. Beautiful serve. Second serve ace, you don't see that too often. Did oh, it don't again. tell me. He's Do not tell it. me again. He's done it again. <laughs> oh, that's great. We've got a bird's eye view up here. And once again, he was under the pump, chasing balls. And he's come up with the winner. What a highlights reel. 26 winners to 13. Puts it away and holds. Four no, all, second set. There's no second guessing his athleticism. He's uh, as good as they get when it comes to that. It's been a good contest. A good contest to come after this match. Great Britain's Laura Robson, of course, a winner of Junior Wimbledon when she was 14, taking on Melanie Udan of the USA. Yeah, Melanie had that spectacular run at the U.S. Open a couple of years ago, catching uh, the proverbial lightning in a bottle. Yeah, trying to get back to those uh, lofty heights after uh, a tough 2011.
bit of spin on that ball. It nearly started near the middle of the court and tailed all the way out. change here for uh, Nasser who's uh, had to work a lot harder on his service games but getting through this one uh, much more comfortably yeah, nice yeah. and he holds to love keeps his nose in front five games to four you're watching day two of qualifying we'll be back shortly live here from Melbourne Park National uh, Tennis League being uh, played all over the country uh, coming here to Melbourne Park during the Australian Open. That is the scoreline, a fairly eve affair between Gianluca Nasu of Italy and Australia's Matt Reid. And uh, Reid needed to come out and hold here. Time. To uh, stay alive in this second set. Or will the Italian get a break? We uh, wait to find out. He sure has lifted his game in this set. See if you can put some pressure on Matt to uh, get the serves in as hard as he can. Tennis. Yeah, Matt doing everything he can to make him hit one more shot. That's the legacy of Leighton Hewitt right there. Mm. on the drop shot to good effect after a powerful baseline rally. You can see it coming from back here because of our position. You could see the change in the grip, but that was well hidden from Matt. So 
now a couple of uh, set points for the Italian Gian Luca Nasso to take this to a third set. Sasha, uh, over in uh, Europe, uh, watching our live stream, uh, loving the work of Olivia Rigoska moments ago. Yeah, good strong return there from Reed. Rafael Nadal and Leighton Hewitt also practicing here at Melbourne Park uh, today. desk is in the media center I have a chance to see the players come out onto center court and I'll tell you what no one works harder in his practice sessions than Rafa Nadal mm. beautiful place to 210 kilometers an hour so he was staring at a set point Reed and he's about to get it back to juice Fourteen kilometers an hour. Placement and speed. So with the set point. Flattened that backhand out, gave him a little bit different look. NASA wasn't prepared. Ball went wide. Caroline Wozniacki uh, tweeting Mark uh, today. Of course, uh, bowing out of uh, Sydney yesterday. Uh, has uh, flown down to Melbourne. Uh, did have an MRI in Sydney. But uh, no major damage, she thinks. A little bit of inflammation, but should be right to go for the Australian Open. That's good to hear. Charlotte with us from uh, France, enjoying the coverage. So another set point here for the Italian.
lot to be said when you play the toughest points at your highest level, and that's certainly the case there with Matt, Matt Reed in that particular instance. Tough serve and an incredible forehand. there for the Italian great point between the two players though great ball striking got another set point time again. Yeah, it's his uh, 29th winner. Make it 30 to 16. And he gets it back to Juice. Hard to split this pair, but a very tight match. Long 10th game. Not much separating them, that's for sure. Again, that's good tennis. Remember the hardest ball to hit is the one right at your midsection. No doubt. Total points won 76 reads, 72 NASA. So it's been a very tight match. An hour and 38 minutes. Kelsey winning the first set, 6 4. The second set right in the balance. Big serve down the tee has worked so well for him once again. Over 200 Ks. Five games on. And the battle continues. Right here. On show court three. The girls will be coming up this afternoon. Melanie Udan and Laura Robson, Arena Rodianova. And Sally Piers, also in action from an Australian perspective. Piers taking on a seated player in Alexandra Panova of Russia. So plenty still to look forward to. Keep your tweets uh, coming in. Hashtag Oz Open. Australianopen.com. Make sure you check out the AO Vault. Uh, some of the great matches of years gone by. It's been a highlights reel year after year. All the comebacks, the upsets, the epic rallies of Australian Open history. Check it out. First running forehand I think he's missed in about seven mm -hmm. games. is wearing on uh, starting to get through his service games more comfortably
Yeah, uh, quite comfortably. He holds to love. He keeps his nose in front. Matt Reid's going to come out and serve on the other side of this break to get it to a second set tiebreaker. More coming up here from Melbourne Park. Ready? Play. At Australian Open 2012. With activity on and off court, it's outstanding value. Putting you right in the heart of all the action. The best in the world are coming. So book at Ticketek now. <laughs> Pitches coming to you from uh, Melbourne Park on day two of qualifying. As we uh, tick past uh, four o'clock in the afternoon uh, here in Melbourne, uh, wherever you are, right around the world, it's uh, terrific to have you with us. Hope you're enjoying the tennis. Uh, Brett Phillips and uh, Mark Tillman, we're high above uh, show court three here. And the man on screen has hit some unbelievable shots this afternoon. Uh, double winner account of his Italian opponent, but right now, he needs to get through his service game here to take this to a second set tiebreaker. Miss hits there. One went over and one didn't. Depth there on that rally from Nassau. 15 year old. Reed seemed to be on the back foot throughout that, even though he was getting the ball solidly in the middle of the racket. Sweatband from Matt Reed. You guys stand in the middle. Here we go. Oh! The attempt. Take two. Oh! He's overcooked it. So uh, it sets up now a couple of set points once again for the Italian. There's one saved. Move 
movement uh, just behind. Some young fans wanting to get closer to the action, just not knowing the etiquette. No, it's still moving. Still moving. Off forehand there off the second serve short reply and Matt jumped on it to take advantage you like to see the aggressiveness yeah, he's shown some great fight when he's been down today uh, to get himself back into games So another set point opportunity. On the line, tough one to see from our end of the court here. Uh, the Italian thinking it might have been just over. Just hit with some real ferocity. So we're back to Juice. to get this to a second set tiebreaker. He's doubled the amount of winners and his unforced error count read 37, uh, so 24. That's a fantastic return. <laughs> the battle continues. Second serve dropped short into the service court, jumped right up into his hitting zone. You knew he was going to take a cut at that one, and, and Matt had no even a chance to get that ball back. And that's how he responds. It just doesn't seem to get to him. 212. Not more of those. I'd love right now to get this to a tiebreaker. That's anyone's game. And he does it in fine style. Yeah. Drawing the error off the Italian's racket. We go to a second set tiebreaker. Six games all, second set tiebreaker. After uh, he saved a number of set points, Matt Reed. Just demonstrates his mental toughness, you know, that he was not going to concede anything to the Italian, wasn't going to hand it over. He's going to make the Italian earn it in this tiebreaker. here getting a real treat. Ah! Oh. 
zero root. I'm not even take that right now. That's right. All charity graciously received, I think. <laughs> he's still uh, he's given the, the hand wave twice. We always question whether that's uh, no play really means that, do they? I think they do. Do they? I do. Okay. I think they do. I think they mean it. I think there's a high level of pride that they take in their ball striking. I don't think recreational players mean it, though, because we just take anything. Right, we'll see. was again we're running forehand getting quite a bit of English on that dropping low to Nassau's backhand put it right into the net Players will change ends. There's some work to do here for uh, Matt Reed, the winner of this match. We'll take on uh, Yuichi Sugita of Japan. He won his uh, first round match. interesting to see his strategy here whether he just tries to get the ball into the service court and trust his ground strokes or if he goes for something a bit more
two quality first serves Six, from this end. So now, three set points. Second set tiebreaker. Seen Reed fight back more than once before. What can he come up with, with here on his couple of serves? Saved. Not. He really wants to get his first serve in here. Shorten this point. Six five. So we'll be back on the Italian Not. serve to win this second set but uh, Reed's hanging in there Italians able to take it in a second set tiebreaker, seven games to six. Reid wants a game, maybe not 100% happy with the call, but that's the way it is. And a little bit of frustration that he isn't about to claim that second set, so some work to do. We will uh, take a break and uh, we'll come back with the third set on the other side here at Melbourne Park. So welcome back to uh, Melbourne Park, and Mark, uh, what a good game this has been. Yeah, let me bring you up to speed real quick here, and I'm going to do it briefly. Matt Reed, comfortably in the first set, Nassau not necessarily finding his groove, did so in the second, shortened a lot of his service games. Matt Reed kind of came off the boil a little bit, um, his service games weren't as crisp as they were early. And uh, oh. boy, in that tiebreaker, uh, Nassau handled it quite comfortably. And so here we are. We've got uh, we both players have been asked a question. Both players have answered it one time, and now we're going to see who's got the uh, the onions to get through in this qualifying match. And a couple of spectacular points as well, Mark. Uh, there's been some fantastic chase of the ball. Uh, Matt Reed has been doing it substantially a, a, a great job of making Nassau hit points on the other side of the net. Nassau's forehand and backhand, frankly, deep into the court and putting the pressure on Matt to be the counter puncher. So kicking off the third and deciding set, no tie break in this set, of course. And it is Matt Reed from Australia to serve. Notice Nassau's made a, uh, an adjustment in his return of serve. He's actually going backwards a little bit as he splits steps to get the ball into the court. It seems to help him with his timing. Oh. 
and the enforced air is creeping further into Matt Reed's tally. Nassau realizing if he can get the ball back into the court on those serves, he's got a real chance to uh, put the pressure on Matt. He just seems to be hitting a bit more crisply, a bit more cleanly. Game uh, reaching the two hour mark and played in no doubt the best conditions we've had over the last two days. And probably the best uh, crowd in attendance as well. 40, 15. serves is the only way you can describe that. So the opening service match, game service game of the uh, third set, and Matt Reed successful. It's one love. Yeah, you'd like to see one or both players really lift the level and consistency of their play. Um, you'd want to take that into tomorrow. You don't necessarily want to be the player who lost, or the opponent rather, lost the match. You want to be the player that won the match. And it'll be interesting to see which of these gentlemen lift to that level. Reed knows what it's like to play in an epic battle. He uh, fell a little bit short with uh, Bernard Tomic in an epic boys doubles final at Wimbledon. He went down 10-12 in the final set so he knows uh, what it's like to play in a long epic. Nassau's ball striking has remained fairly consistent over these last last set and certainly into these two games. Reed seems to have uh, taken his foot off the gas pedal, so to speak, playing a bit more defensively. Imagine it's pretty difficult to pick yourself up after losing such a long set, especially in a tie break. Yeah, but that's what you're asked to do. I mean, if you know, if everybody could do it, it would be a lot more professional tennis players. There it is. That's what the great ones have. They have that gift to say, okay, that's over, can't do anything about it, let's get into the next point, the next ball toss, the next return of serve, whatever it might be that you have to concentrate on next. That was what Pete Sampras did so sensationally. He just forgot about what the history was and worried about the present. Then he said in 
some respects Sampras was quite emotionless. Is that, is that a good thing for a tennis player? I, to use your expression, it's horses for courses, isn't it? Uh, some people play best like that. I, I don't think you could say that uh, Francis Schiavone would be a, a better player if she played with that taciturn sort of expression on her face. Federer, as a younger player, was very emotional, and, and he's now harnessed that into a razor-sharp ability. Certainly Novak, a very emotional player. Uh, Rafa, emotional player. Uh, so you'd have to say that at the pointy end, emotion is almost the, the engine that fuels you in many respects, on top of the preparation and, and that mental confidence and self-confidence. A sports psychologist interviewed the other day and she said once you bring emotion into it you lose all logic yeah, it is that balance between the two isn't it deuce. so back to juice here it's a particular game that's been really hard on himself Chance to break though. Left. Another break opportunity here for Reed. Crushed that forehand. So I knew the importance of that point. A break there would have seen Reed two love up in the all important decider. And he ripped that forehand with venom. That's a well-played point. Could have been anybody's at any time. Nassau just making the air. Both players would be feeling the fatigue at this stage. I'll be trusting their preparation, their fundamentals to get them through this. The most important thing there will be to keep a positive attitude about their tennis. Another massive point for Matt Reed.
deuce. We'll clip the net on the way across on the slice, threw off Reed's timing just enough to get the ball into the net. Both players breathing very hard out there. Let's head down to Adrian Franklin during uh, a crucial uh, time of the match here. It's juice between Nasso and Reed, but Adrian's got a very special guest with him. I absolutely do. Some tennis royalty, luck luckily enough for me. Mr. Tony Roach, the current coach of Leighton Hewitt, as we just watch this point, and that goes oh. along. So Reed hit that along. Leighton's yeah, hit a little bit with Matt Reed in the past. How, how's he going out there, do you feel? Um, look, um, I've spent a lot of time with Matty. Um, he lives next door to Leighton, so uh, it's been good for Matt to come out and hit with Leighton, just to uh, see the intensity that Leighton puts into his practice session. So, uh, look, uh, Matty's come on pretty good the last six months. So he's got a good game, big game. He's a good athlete. He moves very, very well. So, he's got a lot going for him. He just needs to maybe believe a little bit more in himself, and he's got to start to win these type of matches to make that next step. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a winnable match for him at the moment, as Naso sits at advantage and on serve. Um, how, what do you think he needs to do out there to, to get this one done in the third set? Well, he just seems to be um, letting this guy dictate a little bit too much. He's sort of maybe bought. Um, but having said that, um, he's got a big forehand, big weapon. I, you know, I feel like he's got to look for that and use it a bit more. Yeah, sure. We sit back at Juice. Long points. You mentioned long games. You're working with Leighton at the moment. He mentioned the other day that he feels as though he's one of the most dangerous unseeded players going into the Australian Open. You feeling confident leading into Monday? Oh, look, the thing with Leighton is he just needs matches under his belt. He's, um, he's um, obviously trained and practiced hard, um, but there's no substitute for matches. And uh, he was he got three good matches in Perth and uh, then last week in, uh, this week in Sydney uh, he played pretty well for a set and a half and then just fell away a little bit but in terms of hitting the ball he's hitting it very very well he just needs to uh, get in and win some tight matches and I think uh, that uh, you know you'll go on from there so obviously you need a good draw here at the Australian Open to sort of play yourself into the tournament so that's going to be crucial. Your coaching resume is pretty phenomenal, it's fair to say. You've worked with Federer, Rafter, Leighton Hewitt, even Elena Dokic. What is it that keeps you going? What do you love so much about getting out there and working with these top players? Well, I think, um, you know, I learned a lot when I worked with Lendl that uh, every day um, you can go out and you can improve. And um, that's what I look for in, in the players, that there's um, never a day that you should let go by that you can't work on something and get better. Well, thank you very much. You get off to the gym now with Leighton. Good luck leading into the Australian Open. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good on you, Adrian. Adrian Franklin with uh, a living legend in Tony Roach. Last point of that game was uh, one an interesting more. one for Matt Reed. He was adamant that it was a let. I thought I heard the let court up here as well. We're quite a long uh, way from uh, that Unless net. there's some sort of echo in the court that we're unaware of. It was... Um, there's definitely a sound there and... Uh, Matt uh, remonstrated with the chair umpire, but nothing doing. So we're back at one all and Reed serving. Tony Roach uh, brought up a very interesting point there, Mark, and you were talking at, at length about it yesterday, and that's just self-belief. We, we saw earlier on Andrew Harris. Uh, he really lifted, and you could sense that his self-belief was starting to kick in. Uh, Tony mentioning that Matt Reed's... Uh, biggest problem is his self-belief and uh, I know you're big on it well look these guys all train hard they work hard in the gym they work hard hitting balls they hit work really hard at just about every part of the game one of the things that I think that these a lot of these elite athletes sometimes don't work on is, is understanding that they are they do belong out here and it's the ones that get it, however they get it, are the ones that really seem to lift to the highest level of the sport. There are 
so many players you say, wow, what about the potential that that player had? And, and that, that list is long and distinguished. Um, Look at that. Well, he's not going to enjoy this, Matt. Now they're, they're going to have to play a let. Something's blown onto the court. Yeah, the Look. drink bottle from his bag. It was from the Italian's bag, so after replaying the point, Matt would have uh, appreciated a let a couple of moments ago. We were talking about emotion yeah, before. The emotion, I, th I think, you know, I was talking about Tony Roach. Uh, I mean, if he, if he was your coach, uh, he would look at everything uh, in a in a, a way th without uh, throwing too much emotion out there. He, he never seems to change his expression, and he'd be a great solid man in your camp, I'd imagine. That's right. But remember, Tony's a very competitive man as well, and so he would be having you in those competitive situations all the time. So when you got out there and you really needed to feel those that pressure, you'd be used to it. And I think that's the strength of his training regimen is that he always puts you in those positions so when you are um, out there in the match you're, you're like you're used to it it's like oh I do this all the time I do agree with Tony though certainly that Matt could be using that forehand to push his opponent around the court he, he does tend to hit the ball down the middle and wait for the mistake certainly on the run he can crack the ball off off the forehand wing You'd like to see him use that a bit more to dictate tempo and uh, pressure on his opponent. Well, after a few little distra distractions during that game, he uh, he takes the game. He leads 2-1 third sets. A little bit of repacking there. With MLC Tennis Hot Shots, kids are ready for tennis as soon as they can swing a racket. With modified balls, courts and rackets to make things easy, they'll serve, rally and score right away. Visit tennis.com.au today. Welcome back to Melbourne Park on AustralianOpen.com. Day two of qualifying on this Thursday and it's turned oh. out to be quite a pleasant afternoon. And we're witnessing a battle royale that uh, has now been going for two hours and 20 minutes between Matt Reed and Gian Nasso from Italy. And currently things on an even kilter on serve with uh, Reed just with his nose in front. Happy to get back out onto the court as you can see. I think the Italian just making sure that bag's sitting properly and nothing's going to fly out of it. Yeah, that's right. So it's read 2 1 with Nasso serving. Mm. 191 clicks that one. Right on the tee. that massive forehand from the Italian putting Reed on the defensive couldn't handle the pace in that instance netted the ball He 
Pete seems to be a bit distracted. He's looking around, not necessarily uh, having that level of intensity he had earlier in the match. Let's get his focus back. So in the end, it was an easy service game for now. So it's all square at two all. Australian Open. Dot com. It's your one-stop shop for everything Australian Open. Live scores, news, photos, draws and statistics. We've also got the IBM Slam Tracker. Beautifully set up from that first serve. 187 clicks to the Italians' uh, forehand and he struggled from that point on. You would think at this point of the match you're going to see the the players try and shorten some of these rallies given the um, two hours and 23 minutes into this one. Thank you. It's no doubt an entertaining contest. Both players have been animated from time to time. Some great hitting. Left. Some spectacular shot making. It's been quality tennis. call that one went match way no Hawkeye of course in qualifying so they're relying on the lines people that do such a wonderful job players don't agree with them all the time that's what they're there for Beautiful volley. Got himself nice and low, the hand below the ball. 40, Stiff wrist, killed it right into the deuce court. The hand court, rather. certainly came whizzing back at Reed with interest. I don't think we were expecting it to come back that fast, to be honest with you. So a deep second serve, and it was 174 clicks. It was a brave second serve, and he has taken the game. We're on serve here in the third set. No tie break, remember. It's 3-2 in the decider as we take a break on AustralianOpen.com.
deciding set. And Matt Reed from Australia, who started playing tennis at six years of age. His family had an old asphalt tennis court in their backyard and was offered a scholarship to the Nick Bolateri Academy in Florida when he was 15 years of age. Boarded at the academy for two years. That's right. Admires Leighton Hewitt for his on-court focus and determination. And apparently they're neighbors. That might explain some of the uh, dogged chase of some of these balls that we're seeing from his uh, camp. His favorite movie is Never Back Down, so we might be in for a, a real slog here in the third set. Played. Didn't do enough with the volley. 15 and Gave the Italian time to drop his racket and lift it right over his head. Dictating the point extraordinarily well there. I wonder if he's channeling Tony Roach's <laughs> advice from afar. Change up on that second serve to go out wide. Reed's been running around all his second serves really throughout the match to try and get his forehand to bring it to bear on that. Nassau not allowing it in that instance. too flat. It did carry a bit long. Yes. So just missing and the Italian squares it up again at three games all. You know, if this is the quality of the qualifying tournament, we are going to be in for a real treat over the fortnight here down at Melbourne Park. I've seen some entertaining stuff over the last two days, but this is certainly the closest tussle we've had so far. Enjoying every minute of it. just been hoping and wishing that the lines person set out there it was floating for a while yeah, you just never know when the ball comes up off the bat like that and it's knuckleballing through the air it's a little spin draw on in this deciding set every little victory 
is a psychological victory. There's no question. I think that's why you'll see Matt even uh, come in on uh, balls out wide for Tenasso to try and shorten some of these points, try and conserve some of the energy. Tenasso playing most of his tennis on clay, probably more inclined to get into these longer rallies. Deep serve at 205 clicks did the trick. So not happy. Thought the call, thought the ball was a bit long there. I don't think it would have made a difference. Heavy hitting. Italian getting the better of Reed on that occasion. And all of a sudden, a vital point now for Naso. He's got to break points. What a way to answer. That's 214 been, clicks. That's been the story of his day so far, getting himself backed into a corner and, and having, finding within him the, the skill to get it through. Lifting. Again, that self-confidence so vital at these, at these points and these critical points. going to hate that. Ah. Advantage read. Yeah. Waited for the call. He was going to hit that ball no matter what until he heard it. A couple of great answering serves from Matt Reed. Just keeps backing it up, doesn't he? Game read. And that's well and truly off the frame and will bring rain. It is uh, game, game for Matt Reed, 4-3. He's fighting tenaciously. And strap yourselves in. We might be here for a little bit longer yet. 4-3, third set. Ticket needs for the Australian Open, tickettech.com.au. And a great value, those uh, passes, a ground pass, so marks about tw just under $30, $29. And you can be here from morning till night. 
having a look at so many courts and uh, and you might just run past your favorite player as well out I'm, on one of the practice courts. I'm hard pressed to tell you a better value for money from a sporting experience, particularly in the first week. You can get some unbelievable matches in some of the show courts, the outside courts, and indeed the proximity you can get to the players as they practice in and around the grounds. It's a sensational, sensational experience. If you get the opportunity to come visit us at Melbourne Park, please do so. Played. Beat your opponent deep into the court. And have the skill to just drop the ball over the net. Where'd our sun go? Yeah, a little bit of cloud cover. I don't think we should be too worried at this stage. Big uh, game this one for Reed. He yeah. knows a break here really puts him in the driver's seat. I was thinking the exact same thing. This is now the time to really step it up. having none of it. Again, the short ball from off of Matt Reed's racket. Nassau seeing it, stepping into the court, and putting the pressure on. Reed's going to need to find a way to get his chest over that end line there and really start putting the pressure back on Nassau. Italian counter punches and it's level pegging for all and just to remind you no tie break in the third set his hat on the strength of his first serve throughout the match.
Right at the body. Yeah, tough second serve. Nasso having some choice words for himself. Solitary experience out there. He's uh, certainly walked into the house of mirrors there, hasn't he? Pretty good team. They call it the Wilson experience from the movie Castaway. Second serve here. for Reed to win would have put him under the pump a little at uh, at 30 all at four all but Reed just with a little bit of breathing space on serve again right over the tape he's going to take it it is 5-4 with uh, Matt Reed just with his nose in front but what a battle it is turning out to be one set all 5-4 at the change of ends as uh, we head deep into the third set. Let's head back downstairs now. David's with us again. Plenty of action going on in the outside courts, of course. Not just Matt Reed on show court three, but another Aussie playing. Monique Adamzak here won the first set 7-6 in a tight battle against the Russian Olga Puchkova. Um, we'll keep you updated how this goes, but she's looking pretty good at this stage. Monique, back to you guys. Great stuff, uh, David. The boys uh, have been doing a terrific job uh, scouting around. Adrian's done everything from shopping, uh, playing with the ball boys, talking to Tony oh, Roach. So he's, right. had a, he's had a big day, that's Adrian a, Franklin. That's a soup to nuts situation, isn't it? <laughs> so it's 5-4, third set. turning into a really good match. Definitely the business end here. You got a prediction? <laughs> Never. But particularly in this instance, because they are two well-matched athletes. Probably come down to another tiebreaker. If we were having one in the third well, set. That's of right, my mistake. There isn't a tiebreaker in these. Brave. Fortune oh. favors the brave, they say.
he pumping himself up there to get it right back into this particular serve. Nassau doing his own soul searching. Crafted point there. Getting Reed running back and forth. Well attended match here today, isn't it? This is the best uh, crowd we've had for the qualifying matches to date, especially on this court. Oscar remains in the stands watching very intently. So what a big point this is for Reed. Couldn't be any bigger because it's match point. Break point, match point. And I think the Italian knows What's the stick? pressure he's under here. Played it well, the oh. Italian. It had a look, just didn't want to trickle over that time, did it? Those forehands uh, had some interest on them. Mm. And he gets a lot of action on that ball, too. You can see it dipping down hard towards the baseline. He takes a real big cut at it. So a match point saved. to save another one. by a lot but it's out and the overrule from the chair umpire what drama on Reed's second match point the lines person has called it out but the chair person's overruled we don't have Hawkeye at the qualifying of course we replay the point at match point. match point and he saves another one Nasso we're back to juice that would have been difficult to come back from thinking you've won the match 
only to have it overruled and then play such a long point. He's got his hands on his knees now, trying to catch his breath. Nassau taking his time at this end, looking at all the balls, trying to do the same thing. And we're ready to go. He's just clawing his way back, the Italian. That must be so difficult to just go through that little moment where you think you've you've won the match and it's taken from you. And Nasso is just gripping on for dear life. And he levels it up. Five a haul. And you're so right, Mark. Reed just has to put it in a neat little box and forget about it. Start all over again. There's no getting around it. You're still out there. Well, that's doesn't make it any easier, does it? No. Not exactly what the doctor ordered. No, and that's what he's actually done extraordinarily well during this match is, you know, getting back into the point, getting his best serve moving when things don't go his way. Understandably, in this instance, a little, I suppose. 15 Forced air is 55 for Reed, 36 for Nasso. Reed thinking it. May have touched the line. It wasn't wide from this end. It was 212 clicks down the tee, and he's probably got a bit of a case. With the weather delay, do you think it'll be possible that the um, the qualifying will press on in late into Sunday and perhaps into Monday? At this point, I wouldn't put it past being played on Sunday. Interesting situation if it does bump into the main draw. We might get a gig on Channel 7 yet. <laughs> Done it well. He's picked himself up after a, a mini disappointment, or major disappointment, I suppose, losing uh, that point. The point being overruled on match point, and it's now six-five. 
and we'll come back very shortly with more of this battle royale. Ready, play at Australian Open 2012. With activity on and off court, it's outstanding value, putting you right in the heart of all the action. The best in the world are coming, so book at Ticketek now. Tommy, in great form, knocked over the number seven yesterday, winning today in Sydney, and hasn't he come such a long way? His level of play is remarkable. He's now finally filling out into that 6-4 frame of his, and he has the confidence to play with the best players in the world. It's uh, phenomenal to see his, his mental capacity to be uh, on form and on song is fantastic. Now so to serve. He's 5-6 down third set, no tie break. Plus he plays a kind of an unconventional game that probably puts people off a little bit. Or his opponents, I should say. I love the team. About to tick into the three-hour mark for this uh, three-setter first round men's qualifying. Timely air there off Nasso's backhand. the 15th round of a heavyweight fight and each player is just trying to get the maximum amount of their body at this stage. I'm sure the opponent that waits for them is licking their chops at the fact that the player that will have played three sets just to uh, match them. convinced that was a fault that went through the line Empire saying it went through the line and so the umpire effectively is saying he can't tell if it bounced on the line call but the correct one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So there it is. It's all tied up at six apiece. No tie break. So we keep going until we get a winner. There's no bell here in the 12th round, uh, Mark. We just keep on going. No, sir. You almost thought when Reed was up 30 love in that game that he was going to turn the tide there. But again, Nassau just lifted that much more. And here we are at six each. Fifteen little drop shot wasn't the best, but uh, it did the trick in the end. It was just a change, you know, just try to get uh, Nassau seeing a different having move moving forward is sometime as effective as moving side to side. kick serve that Nassau's not a short man and he tried to hit that ball above his head service games for Reed have been quite comfortable. Seems to have gotten his rhythm back on his service games. Great serve. Yeah, set up by that first serve as well into the body. It froze him and he had no chance to get down that tee. 181 clicks and he now takes the lead again. It's 7-6. We're playing advantage in the third and deciding set. What a game it is. They'll take every second on that bench. for all of your ticket needs for the Australian Open. I asked you yesterday, Mark, I don't know if I got a definitive answer in the end. Any early predictions for the Open? I don't know. It's hard to go past the first three. And then after that, someone catches lightning in a bottle and it could... Mm. Uh, you, you'd have to give Sanga a, a fighting chance. Um, I like Marty Fish's form. Now so serving, 6-7 down. That's the way to start the set. The game, I should say. having something to say to a fan. Not sure what he was complaining about. Sounds like he had some
something to say about a fan with a microphone on uh, in his phone. Certainly didn't affect him on that point, though, did it? And can only be excused if AustralianOpen.com was on the phone. So sure he could have done anything else with that volley except for just get his hand on it. Not sure I'd apologize in that instance. Again, I, I do believe that they take that very seriously. Mm. That they it's an want interesting point. It is a very interesting point you make. They hit say, that many balls. We would apologize, recreational players. This is uh, a day in the office for these guys. Yeah. And that's a lovely yeah. serve at 175. All square again, it is seven all. And it is just a fight to the end and the first person to wilt will go under. I'm amazed Nassau can get so much on that return moving backwards. Uh, you know, most people, when they're returning serve, they're moving forward into the court. Nassau is taking a different approach. And a successful one for him, at least. An absolute porker. 15 all. That's just about the best return we've seen over the two days so far. Again, leaning back and giving it some. He's letting the ball just drop into his hitting zone as if it was a, a forehand off the clay. It's an interesting strategy. Just a little chance here for the Italian. More than a little chance now. So, Gian Nasso, who s has survived two match points in this set, has now got two of his own. Or at least a break point, I should say. Break point, that's correct. So he will have to come back and serve for it, but cracking the armor there uh, is certainly breaking the trend, isn't it? Eight seven for Nasso third set. Five drops of essence of a rapper. Ah, yes, I can smell his feet. Six drops of essence of Roger. So suave, so clean, so neat. Please add some Hewitt passion. And next, an AO cap. Sun sweat and eight bronze dossiers. Some jocks belonging to Pat. 
Pass the spoon, it's time to beat. Pass the hurricane for a little treat. Pass the crowd in Garden Square. Here you go. Is that a hair? This is the essence of fairness. We share it with our chums. This is the way we mix it. This is our summer of fun. Five drops of essence of Rafa. Six drops of Federer's charm. Eight drops of Kimmy and Wazzy. Ten drops of Serena's arm. This is the essence of tennis. This is the taste of our blue. This is the way we mix it. We've done it all for you. Craig Willis and Adrian Franklin there. Great to concept the film festival. And uh, we'll see the winners of the Changing Ends competition throughout the two weeks on the giant screens around Melbourne Park. 5,000 not a prize too for the uh, lucky entry that uh, has put together a short film on the Australian Open that the judges like the best. Yeah, so he's whipping through this. It's 30 love. Reed showing real signs of fatigue here. Some cramping. And indeed, no foot movement there at all. And after I went prematurely in the previous game, he now has three match points after surviving two of them. Looks like he's really favoring that right knee. Three hours and 14 minutes. That's fallen in. It was wishful thinking from the Italian, I think. He had got a few up his sleeve, though. I think it's might be his uh left thigh there that's cramping. It's really neat. Right, no. And there it is. What a way to finish. And with a bit of a statement as well. Gian Nasso from Italy has won what's turned out to be a bit of an epic on show court three. Winning four six seven six nine seven after three hours and 14 minutes, an enjoyable match. It really was, uh, you had just about everything you could ask for. Uh, the athletes that were out there competing were certainly giving it everything they've got. Nassau at the end did win, there's no question about that. I think we'll uh, almost be in a position to head down to David. Uh, he's going to interview the winner with uh, Reed whipping straight off the courts. It's been a long one, but the Italian goes through. Let's head back down to David now. Gianluca, congratulations. A fantastic win the first round over Matt Reed. How does it feel? Um, it was unbelievable because uh, it was three hours and 15 minutes matches and uh, I had one match point against and uh, I feel so so good now and I'm a little bit tired but it was uh, unbelievable and in Grand Slam it's uh, too important. Just on one of those match points, it was actually overall, did you think you'd lost the match? Yeah, yeah, but uh, I don't know, it was so so fast, you know, and I don't know if the, if the ball was good or not, but uh, it's better like this. We all need a bit of luck in tennis and you got some. Uh, you play most of your tennis on the clay courts. Um, do you find it hard to adjust to the hard court? Yeah, no, no. I, I, because I'm from Italy, so we play always on, uh, on clay, outdoor. So I prefer to, to play there and I play a lot of tournaments on clay. But uh, I like uh, this uh, surface and um, nothing. I'm trying to do my best uh, always and I, I have to try the confidence. I have to find the confidence. Well, an absolutely outstanding match. Probably the best match we've seen in qualifying so far. So congratulations and good luck in the second round. Thank you very much. David uh, brought up an interesting point there. We'll discuss in a moment the uh, overall uh, match point. Uh, 
where Matt Reed actually thought he'd won the point. But anything you can you make out of those statistics there, Mark? I think if you look at them in uh, some detail, you'll you'll see that the uh, the unforced errors from from Reed really ended up catching up to him in the end. Um, certainly, the pressure from Nassau with respect to his the strength of his forehand and backhand were, was part of that, and certainly the strength of the uh, first serve percentages from Nassau again you could really point to that as a significant factor in his ability to get through that three set match. So in the end uh, a great uh, a great match of tennis uh, you would think that Matt Reed will be quite gutted thinking that uh, he had won the match and uh, the Lions person uh, has uh, called it and then the chairperson overrules and uh, Nasso had to replay the points. And two, Nasso's credit had to uh, win the point to save the match again, but he did that in total saving two. And he's been able to, uh, to win the match. Uh, as David said, everyone needs a little bit of luck. That's right, I think you can really throw that one in, in that barrel there. There's uh, some luck, but certainly some skill as well. Nasso deserved to win that in the end. Nasso winning 4-6, 7-6, 9-7.